as we are between sessions out here. We rotate, alternate between public carding and membership carding on Thursdays and Fridays after lunch. So membership hours are full membership before lunch up until 1 p.m. And then we alternate back and forth with the public carding. Gives us a chance to sort of all come in and go back out together. Um, sessions are a little bit you know shorter they're determined by the time it takes to run a couple of carding sessions but I thought I'd talk a little bit about the deeper mechanics about what goes on with these things I think it's really cool and I learned a lot from when I started <laughs> versus now so uh, the big thing that makes these machines so much different and, and you can learn some things about driving a car from doing these but not as much as I thought uh, there's a lot of things about these that are actually the opposite of what you might be used to or, or at least different enough that it doesn't help. But the big thing is a solid axle. So because it has a solid axle and no suspension, but there is suspension, the, the frame itself is sort of has some flexibility to it. But <clears throat> hey. See you. So in order to get it to turn, you'll notice that there's a lot of sliding going on, a lot of correcting of the wheel. And that's by design because without a differential, these two tires are fighting each other whenever you're rotating the cart. And you can tell just by pushing it, like if I turn that steering wheel right now and try to roll it, it's very difficult to move um, because these tires are binding. So what they've done is, is this whole mechanism right here is is the trick to the whole system working normally on a car the tire rotates on the pivot point so the tire would be right here right and it's like they could do that but they intentionally don't do that and the reason being they want to do what's called jacking they want to put this cart into three wheels into a tripod when you turn the steering wheel so <clears throat> when i turn this wheel and it's stuck to the ground there because the tires are sticky that this tire moves to a radius and it's not parallel to the ground because there's caster this pivot point is tilted backwards so what's up man so when this tire turns to the left let's say it goes up also and then that other tire over there comes down and goes to the right when it turns to the left it comes down and rotates at the same time so by one tire moving upwards and one tire moving downwards it creates instability on this whole system. It doesn't set flat on the ground. It intentionally creates, you know, like a, a chair leg that's one, one leg's too short. And so what happens when you're going around a turn, because of that action, one of these two back tires or one of two front tires is going to come off the ground. But typically because you're on the gas, it tends to um, push a lot of weight onto the back tire and it'll lift the inside tire. And so on a four wheeler or a differential based vehicle, if you lift a tire, it will probably just rotate and spin if it's an open diff. If, if it's a locking diff, then that's a different story also. But because this is a fixed axle, lifting a tire doesn't kill your drive and it gives all the drive to the outside tire. So let's say you're turning left, you lift up that inside left tire just a hair as you're rotating and turning now all the drive power goes to this tire off this axle. And so at that point, this tire is trying to push the cart that way. If you can think about it as, you know, if it was up on two wheels and you floor it, it's gonna wanna go the opposite, you know, to the opposite side. And so that's what happens when you, t when you hit a curb. If you get up on two wheels and you're on the gas, the cart can go more to that direction you're trying to go in, but it can also become violently <laughs> Uh, act, like if it's a shifter cart in a power band and you hit a curbing while you're on the gas it can cause the cart to just suddenly shoot to the direction you're trying to turn but this goes down to one of the reasons we don't lean we try not to it's hard because it's a habit we don't lean into the turns because when I'm turning left if I lean into the left I'm putting weight on this tire right here and what's this tire trying to do it's trying to push the cart that way 
And so it starts to fight the front tires and you end up in, in sort of a push. It doesn't really want to turn like you want it to. So you have to let yourself sort of fall against the seat. And that's why these seats are so tight. They're five different sizes roughly. And you get them specific to your body width. And when you go into a turn, you put pressure on this seat. This seat puts pressure on the chassis, puts pressure on that tire. And then the whole thing sort of jacks even more, even better. And it allows it to really rotate and go around the corner if you're on the gas. Now, if you're on the brake, it kind of does the opposite thing. But typically, when you're braking, that's the tricky part about these, these carts, especially most classes of carts are rear brakes only. We have no front brakes. There is a lot of weight on the back. You're sitting way back and the motor is situated towards the back. So these things have a very rear biased weight distribution. There's like 80, 20 or whatever. So you can brake pretty hard, but you still will easily lock up the rear tires if you brake aggressively. And all you need to do is put a little bit of rotation into the steering wheel while you're braking and you will definitely run out of braking money <laughs> as they say you got ten dollars of traction you can spend it all on braking so if you're in a straight line you're braking as hard as you can you're spending all ten dollars of your traction you put in a dollar's worth of, road, of steering you're out of you're out of money you're going to spend so you can use that to your advantage like as you approach a turn you can sort of as you're getting to the end of your braking and you're going to turn in um, you can use that to sort of get the car to rotate a little bit and then get on the gas um, and sort of throw it in there but you don't want to get too crazy but you typically want to brake like a motorcycle. You want to brake in a straight line and then you trail into steering. And so you transition from braking to steering. Whereas in a car or in a shifter cart where we have front brakes, you can brake pretty late and while turning and it's not that bad. Even though a shifter cart also has a solid axle, it doesn't, you typically have the brake bias set, you know, so that it's pushing a little bit more of the braking onto the front like a car. And you can drive it into the turns while braking a little bit more aggressively. But these, these carts and, and rental carts too, this all applies to those as well. Brake in a straight line as hard as you can and then get off it and turn. Don't lean into the turns. Uh, even on those carts, they're, those things are 400 pounds, the rental carts. These are about 200 pounds. But your body weight still has an impact when you're dancing on the threshold of spinning out and sliding and everything anyway. Plus those carts run pretty hard tires to last a lot longer and all that jazz. So uh, a big mistake though that I still do from riding motorcycles and riding four wheelers is leaning into the turns as I'm approaching them and things like that. And I have to tell myself, you know, don't lean into it. Um, so that's, that's uh, something I've been wanting to talk about. I think it's a pretty cool dynamic about all carts basically with a fixed axle um, is the way that you have to sort of manage the rotation, manage the jacking when it gets up on three wheels, manage the braking. Um, and then, yeah, you can pull some pretty fast times. I ran my fastest lap times ever this morning when I got here, 53.1. So I'm almost in the 52s on a single speed and that's faster than I've been in my shifter cart. So I haven't been quite there yet again since it's gotten warmer, it seems like I'm I'm still two tenths off of that speed now or that time, but um, I'm hoping to break into the 52s one day. May not happen. It's probably not going to happen today, but someday. <laughs> Till next time. Hope you guys have a good day. Later.